On this episode of Cycle Talk, we ride Ducati's Monster 821, a middle mate monster with the sweetest of engines. The Victory Magnum, a dressed up tourer with a thumping V twin. But first, Chris has been riding the new Triumph Tiger XCX to the beach. Five years ago, Triumph threw themselves into the adventure market with the Tiger 800. Prior to that, all their Tiger models were pretty much soft riders. They thought, let's go into the middleweight market first, test the waters, and they built a cracking bike. Now, this is the Tiger 800 XCX, top of the range, the first major update in five years, and it's a beauty. You've got some XR variants, which are more road directed, and then you've got the two off-road bikes, the XC and then the XCX, this one. Now, the XCX has a number of different accessories that come standard over the normal XC. Things like the engine crash bars there, the bash plate down below, and the important rider modes. Both of the XC models have the new WP suspension and they're separate function forks on the front so as in you get rebound control on one fork, compression on the other. The rear shock has preload and rebound damping control only. Adventure bikes from the middle weight up to big bikes, the suspension can be a bit of an Achilles heel. They bottom out quite a bit. This thing, I haven't bottomed out the forks once. It's a tough bike. The suspension's great. The engine's an absolute gem. And the other thing that really impressed me too was the rider modes. Now you have road mode, dirt mode, and rider mode. And road mode, it's great for a lot of conditions. Dirt road just makes it a little bit, I guess, uh, friendlier in the bush, but rider mode is where I really put myself most of the time. I was able to tailor what I wanted, turn off what I wanted, increase what I wanted, and it made the bike an overall better package for me. A couple of other things I think are pretty important to the prospective adventure bike owner. And that is that this bike's got cruise control standard and it only comes on the XCX standard. But it's also really important to know that the seat hasn't changed. Now, when I rode the Tiger 800 back in the day, the seat was the best I had ever sat on. And when you can spend eight hours in a day on the seat and not even think about it, you know it's good. Well, Triumph changed the material and I was just worried that they were gonna change, or well, they had changed the shape as well, and they assured me they haven't. And I can tell you the seat's as good as it ever has been. Brilliant. Loads of accessories you can get for this bike. Panniers, two sorts of panniers in fact. Screens, you name it. Now this one's got the Arrow Road Legal Pipe. Doesn't really give any more horsepower. It does sound a bit sweeter though. But realistically, you know, you can go crazy if you like with the accessory side of things. Now I spent three days on the Tiger 800 XCX in loads of different terrain. The big improvements for me over the previous model are the suspension and the rider modes. It's taken this bike to an altogether different level for me. The 17,690 plus on roads, you can buy loads of accessories for it. It's not the biggest, it's not the smallest, but as an altogether package, it definitely is one of the best on the market. The Triumph Tiger XCX is available in white, blue or black. It's $17,690 plus on-road costs. It comes with a two-year warranty and you can get a lot more information from triumphmotorcycles.com.au. Um, 
I was going all right with that too. <laughs> this is the Victory Magnum. It's $29,995 right away. It's a lot of motorcycle. It's based on the Victory Cross Country, but there are a number of differences that make this Victory's baddest bagger. Let's take a look at a few of the features of the bike. The paint scheme for a start is absolutely stunning. It's got metal flake to die for, and the, the luster is just so deep, and you can see why they've used the Ness family to come up with this paint scheme itself. It's got a beautiful handlebar mounted fairing, which is quite nicely styled, I believe. It's got six speakers in there, and the nice low cut screen, which you look straight over the top of. And the stereo is dead easy to use. All the controls are on the left-hand switch block here, easy to get to with your thumb and the volume increases as your speed increases. Now this bike has a great balance of features that really you can use and you need without being over the top like some high-end top dollar bikes can be. And it's also got cruise control and once again, one of the easiest I've ever used. It's very similar to a car few buttons there, simple. In the bad old days, cruisers would, well, they'd really lag behind when it comes to some engineering details, but not so much anymore, especially bikes like this. It's got the upside down forks with a decent amount of travel, four piston brakes. It's also got a nice single rear shock, as I said earlier. It's got an inch lower suspension travel than the cross country, which is comes, uh, or which the bike's based on, but you don't really even notice it, it feels good. And panniers, plenty of room in there, easy to use. And, and the paint really, even on these little touches around here, is just absolutely stunning. One of the features of the, is the 21 inch front wheel and I think that makes it an easy bike to ride in slow conditions around town. It's not really a bike that you'd, is really at home in heavy traffic, it's more at home on the open road but oh, I found the uh, 21 inch front wheel a positive in the uh, low speed handling side of things. Victory Magnum, it's a premium product, premium components, premium level of fit and finish, but it's also a premium riding experience. As a factory custom bagger, it's one of the best on the market, and it really is suited to someone who's after that motorcycle that sets them apart from everyone else. But at the same token, Victory has a lot of accessories in their catalogue which can allow you to customise it even further. If you're after that premium type of motorcycle where you really do stand apart, then check one out at your Victory dealership as soon as you can. To find a Victory dealer and get a lot more information on the Magnum, go to www.victorymotorcycles.com.au Fearless innovation starts with an attitude. While others claim to be ahead of the curve, we're already leaning into the next one. We're about setting the precedent year after year and letting the rest play catch up. They ride to keep up with today. We ride to own tomorrow. 
read full tests of the Harley Davidson 3500, the custom Yamaha SR400, as well as the Ducati 1200S Monster in Cycle Talk Magazine's March issue. Also featuring classic rotary motorcycles, which will be featured in a future episode of Cycle Talk's TV show. The free Cycle Talk magazine is available from better bike shops right around the country, or you can download digital versions to your tablet or iPhone or read it online. Also in the March issue are posters of Toby Price at the Dakar Rally and the awesome new Yamaha R1. With news, racing and lots more, catch every issue of Cycle Talk magazine. Go to cycletalk.com.au Action cameras are critical to Cycle Talk. Without it, it just wouldn't be the same show. All that onboard footage is captured by these little sort of cameras. Now this is a Contour Rome 3, 299.95, brand new model out on the market. And the beauty about this camera is it's very, very easy to use. So you can do a bit of preset up if you like with your computer or whatever, but you don't really need to. Uh, basically, you bolt it onto wherever you want, your helmet, the bike, and then you slide this big switch forward to switch it on, pull it back to switch it off, and there's a little lock there if you want to put it on and make sure it stays on. What we really like about the Rome series of cameras and the, the contours in general is that they're very easy to mount on the bikes and on your helmets. So they come with these flat mounts, so they can be used on, on the bikes very easily. They come with these curved mounts, which go onto helmets very well. And these curved ones actually are rotating. So that little pivot point where that slides on, then lets you rotate it around, point it in different directions. And there's a little lock button there, so it locks it on. There's also a little hole here for the tether, so if you want to make sure it doesn't get bumped and, and go missing, you can use the tether that it comes with as well. The big point about these though is they've got a rotating front lens element so that you can line them up. They've got, when you press the button on the back, they've got a little laser level so that you can line it up and get it exactly right and pointing in exactly the right direction, which makes life a lot easier than using most of the more boxy shaped uh, cameras that are out there. So there's a built-in microphone, as you'd expect, so you pick up the audio. There's a tripod screw, which opens up a whole world of different accessories. Now, Contour make a whole bunch of accessories for these cameras, including the suction cap mount, including this really unique and really useful uh, rotating mount on a big heavy duty rubber strap. Comes with a couple of different lengths. And with these, you can strap your bike to frame mounts, to pegs, to master cylinders, and get the angle that you want. Now, Cycle Talk is giving away one of these cameras each episode of Cycle Talk TV through, throughout all, autumn. So just go to cycletalk.com.au slash contour. The Contour Rome 3 is available now from motorcycle dealers right around the country. It's waterproof to 30 metres without a case, has quick photo mode, comes with an 8 gigabyte card and more information from motonational.com.au. This is the new Ducati Monster 821. It joins the 1200 as part of the new series of Ducati Monsters, which have been around for well over 20 years now. Now this machine itself, it's a mid capacity. 1200 we tested on Cycle Talk last year, it was a big bike. This one fits into that mid range capacity. 112 horsepower from the Tester Stretter engine and plenty of torque as well. It's a very sweet motor that they put into the Ducati Monster 821 and it means it's a really interesting package. The Tester Stretter engine features ride by wire throttle, three different maps, so you've got sport mode, urban mode and in the middle touring mode. Sport mode gives you that full 112 horsepower, touring mode gives you that as well but on a slightly tamer throttle response and the urban mode brings it back to 75 horsepower which is perfect for commuting and in the rain things like that. So you can easily switch between those three on the go from the left switch block. Now interestingly you can tune those settings up so each one has its own settings for things like Ducati traction control and for the ABS, how aggressive the ABS comes in if you jump on the brakes hard. 
and you can change those. So if, for instance, you hardly ever use sports mode, but occasionally you want to throw a wheelie, you can go to sports mode and turn off the traction control, knowing that if you want to pull a wheelie, uh, only because you're off public streets, of course, you could easily switch to sports mode and then just pop the front wheel up really easily. As far as the handling and the rest of the package is concerned, up front you've got non-adjustable upside down 43mm front forks. I found them pretty good. Don't need a lot of adjustment in a, in a naked bike where you're buying it for just having a lot of fun rather than being full on sports. If you're full on and really want to get into it, maybe you want to look at the 1200. But this bike's quite well set up for street use as it is. The rear shock does its job quite well and is adjustable for preload. Now the only time you probably want to adjust that rear shock is when you're carrying a pillion passenger and to do that you'll also need to remove the neat integrated cowl that comes with the Ducati 821. There's a pair of nice hand grips there for the uh, for passenger and up the front there's a big conventional headlight to light the way. It's a little bit shorter, it's got a shorter swing arm, slightly smaller rear tyre and a half inch narrower rear wheel. Now that all just makes it handle a little bit sweeter around town and, uh, and, and perfectly suits the A21. So who's this machine aimed at? It's aimed at somebody who just wants a naked, fun bike. It's priced from $16,290. So you'll save yourself well over $3,000 on the cheapest 1200 monster, which I think makes the A21 dark a bargain, because that's the one there. This white one is $16,990. And the red one, you save a couple of hundred dollars over the white one. Either way, it doesn't matter which one you choose, they all offer good spirited performance, good handling, the brakes are great, good quality Brembo's, it'll pull you up really sharp, really fast. The instruments of the new generation, uh, black on white TFT, uh, digital display and really cool. And overall, this motorcycle is an awful lot of fun and a fair bit cheaper than the 1200. So unless you're really after that edge of performance and better quality suspension, I suggest you go and have a look at one of these at your Ducati dealer. Well worth a ride. The Ducati Monster 821 is available in dark, in red or white, has a two year warranty and you can get more information from ducati.com.au. Stop dreaming and start riding. Your motorcycle adventures start with Triumph at ProCycles. Get the best of British on a classic Bonville or Thruxton. Tame a tiger in the bush or take the dirt road on an Explorer. Go touring in comfort on a Trophy. Cruise without limits on a Thunderbird. Add some thrills on a Daytona or Speed Triple. Make it happen at ProCycles. Hornsby on Sydney's north side and St Peter's in the south. Now rotary powered machines have never really been mainstream, whether it be two wheels or four. And if you're a motorcycle enthusiast looking for something a little bit different back in the 70s and 80s, there were a few around, such as the Hercules W2000, the Norton Classic, and the Suzuki RE5. 
Now we're going to take a look at those three motorcycles over the next three weeks, but first we're going to check out the Hercules W2000. Now the Hercules W2000 was powered by a 294cc engine, so it was never really going to be a powerhouse. In fact, it produced 23 horsepower early in the model run, but that was increased to 32 by the end of the, uh, the W2000. Now, this bike was actually built by Saks. Saks owned Hercules, and Saks was mainly known for small capacity two-straight motorcycles in Europe at that time but he's more well known these days for building top-notch suspension. Now Hercules even built a rotary powered trail bike of all things, the KC30, and unsurprisingly it didn't sell very well and was discontinued after a very short time. And you'd have to say that the W2000 wasn't a big seller and that's the reason why they are so rare these days. engine from the W2000 would go on to do bigger and better things when this bike was discontinued. The BSA's engineer David Garside took one of these engines, put it in a BSA frame and developed it into a twin rotor design. Unfortunately BSA went broke before it could ever make production but that motorcycle was then to become the basis of the Norton Classic. Well, the Hercules W2000. Now they say that the 2000 stands for the year 2000 and W for Wankel for the engine, but to be honest with you, I didn't expect a lot from this bike because to me it looked the oldest, that the design was a bit archaic, but it is a dead set revelation. It's an amazing little motorcycle to ride. It might only be 294cc, but it goes almost like an Anfield RD 253 for the Yamaha. It, uh, very much a surprise packet. It's only got low miles, it's only got 5,000 miles, and as a result, everything seems to work quite nice. The suspension is much better than you would think. It soaks up the bumps, the road irregularities, and I think it's just a absolute peach of a motorcycle. <laughs> well, I don't really understand why they didn't sell that well. When you, if people rode them, I would have thought people would have felt fallen in love with them, but maybe it was just that rotary thing, you know? People weren't ready for it. Unfortunately, motorbikes occasionally fall over. Now, most people are really scared of this because it's, they think it's gonna be really hard to pick their bike back up. Well, there's a technique that I'm about to show you that makes life a lot easier, make it particularly super easy, but it makes it a lot easier than than trying to struggle with it the way most people do. So I'm going to put this bike on its side. And that's how you find your bike when you when, it, when it's fallen over. Now the first thing to do is don't panic. If it's on the ground for another 30 seconds but you pick it up nice and easy, it, it's easier than if you, uh, if you panic and just run straight and try and pick it up. If you've got a fuel tap, turn the fuel tap off. If you don't have a fuel tap, don't worry about it. And just check that if there's any fuel leaking out of the uh, out of the filler cap, maybe you can try and put a cloth under that, just so that it doesn't spill fuel everywhere. Now, when you do pick it up, you'll want to get it onto the side stand as quick as you can. So if you're getting it, if it's fallen over on the right hand side, put the side stand down now, and then you can pick it up and just lean it straight over onto its side stand. The next thing to do is to make sure that it's not going to roll away. So you want to get the wheels. Uh, at right angles to the hill, and preferably with the hill running away from you so you're not actually picking it up against the hill as well. So you just grab the bike and wriggle it around a little bit if you need to do that. Next thing to do is to realise that you want to pick it up from a nice good lever point, which is the handlebars. So get the front wheel 
and point the front wheel at the sky, like that. And then you come around to the handlebar that's in the dirt or on the road, and you squat down. So you're using your leg muscles, which are the strongest muscles in your body, to pick the bike up. So you've just cupped your hands underneath the, uh, the handlebar here, and you just lift it up. And then you've got the side stand down, just lean it straight over. Now this bike is a fairly lightweight trail bike. It came up very, very easily. But I've used this technique on big bikes like BMW 1200GSs. Uh, Chris did it recently on a Triumph Tiger. It works on all size bikes. Now, of course, some bikes are going to be too big. If you do have a friend, use the same technique. Just get them to do the same sort of thing from the back of the bike at the same time and you can just about pick up anything. And go. These are the new Falco Shiro boots. Now, they're straight out of the hipster manual. Leather and denim styling in the front. There are almost a high top basketball boot style rather than a full full size motorcycle boot, but they are designed for motorcycle use. So a reinforced toe, reinforcement around the ankle area, and little pads up top here to protect your bones if you do have a crash. Now, lace up front, which is a little bit unusual. To make them get in a little bit easier to get in and out of, there's also a zipper on the side. So, they've got a high tex lining. They're 100% waterproof. I've been wearing these for three months or so, in the rain, everywhere I go. They're great. They've been waterproof. They're, they breathe so your feet don't get too hot. They're comfortable. They look good on and off the bike. And at $199.95, we think they're pretty good value around here too. A couple of different colour schemes available. Check them out at all good bike shops and more information from fasada.com.au.